It's Friday, October 22nd, and the time for your Bobby this today morning news update. The hotel and tourism industry has welcomed the latest change to the island's travel protocols, but the medical fraternity is still to digest the news. The reaction followed Thursday's announcement by Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick that as of Sunday, fully vaccinated travelers with an authentic negative PCR test result on arrival will no longer need to be tested again or be quarantined. Emmanuel Joseph has more on what the hoteliers and the doctors had to say. Chairman of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Jeffrey Roach, said the easing of the COVID-19 travel restrictions has the potential of boosting bookings against the backdrop of ongoing cancellations. Potentially, it, sh- it should result in some improvement because, you know, I think a lot of persons were concerned about a number of factors, that being one, you know, the level of testing that was required. When we look at what's happening um, in many other markets, you know, that level of testing is not required. And we totally understand the position that health had taken in terms of trying to keep Barbados safe. But it also meant that, you know, persons, and as I said, not everyone is as concerned about those things. But certainly those persons who are concerned about those things would probably have opted to visit a destination where the testing requirement was not as strict. While welcoming the removal of the requirement for testing and quarantine for fully vaccinated inbound travelers, the hotel and tourism executive nevertheless foresees some hoteliers losing business as a result of the same change in protocols. I think, though, that the flip side of that is that, you know, one of the things that we would have seen certainly with the requirement for testing on a regular environment was that persons had to quarantine. And a lot of those persons would have to quarantine at hotel properties, including locals. Mm. So, you know, we will lose that business, but, you know, it has to be give and take. You know, we're happy that the relaxation will allow potentially more visitors to go ahead and book travel to Barbados. But it's also good for Barbadians who are fully vaccinated and have had a PCR test that, you know, they, know, they no longer have to go through that quarantine period on a rifle back into the country. The medical community, which has been insisting on stricter COVID-19 protocols to try to stem the unprecedented spread of the virus and its consequential deaths, said on Thursday that even though officials knew the change in travel protocols was imminent, the effective date, as announced by government, caught doctors by surprise. We didn't have any heads up. I mean, I heard that that was on the table, mm-hmm. but that it was going to be announced today as a done deal, I did not know. I thought it was coming tomorrow. Uh-huh. Okay. So there you go. So you all have to discuss it first. Yeah, we, we have. We are now digesting it. That was President of the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners, Dr. Linda Williams, and I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The isolation of employees who test positive for COVID-19 is causing several challenges for the patient and the employer, which needs to be hastily addressed. That's according to COVID-19 public advisor David Ellis. He said while workers have complained of not being able to get six certificates in a timely manner to present to the National Insurance Scheme, employers are also in the dark about the status of their employees until after they have recovered and been released. There is, for instance, an issue that I think has come up that is very important, and, and this has to do with um, both uh, employees and employers are worried about it. As you well know, employees um, have been placed in isolation or in quarantine, but the, the big difficulty that they have been facing is that they cannot get the six certificates in a timely manner. So what is happening here is that the claims are being submitted to NIS late or later than stipulated by the NIS. In these circumstances, employers are also unaware of the status of the employees. So a person may be in quarantine, um, then they go and get tested five days later, they're positive. So then they have at least 10 days in isolation. They may get a clearance certificate from the doctor, but they cannot get that yellow form. And part of the reason why they're not getting the yellow form is because I believe 
it has to be delivered within the first four days of, of the illness. There are concerns about other results of this year's CXC exams, and officials from two groups, the Group of Concerned Parents of Barbados and the Caribbean Coalition for Exam Redress, are scheduled to hold talks with Education Minister Santia Bradshaw to discuss the grades and the impact. They are now in the process of gathering information both nationally and regionally in order to present what they say is a fulsome comment on the results. The group are concerned about what they say as subjects where grades are again significantly depressed though nowhere near the widespread scale of 2020. Harry's parent advocate spokesperson Paula Ann Moore. That does not lessen the distress of those children negatively affected. There are some grades which are still outstanding and that further adds to the student stress. We are concerned regarding the emotional and mental effects on all of the candidates, particularly those adversely affected children. The children are numb, demoralized. The anxiety from the delay and the manner in which the results were released was profound for many on top of the 2020 and 2021 exams, all within the prevailing pandemic conditions. What message are we sending? There is no point trying to excel. Are we demonstrating that we care for our children? What will be the effects on our children? Who are our future? What are the effects on our national and regional growth and development? Will we see brain flight arising on how we have handled our school exit exams? There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region in Guyana, another baby from the Region 1 community dies from COVID-19. More from Gordon Mosley of News Source, Guyana. A seven-month-old baby from Region 1 is among six additional COVID-19-related deaths reported by the Ministry of Health today. This is the second baby to die from COVID-19 complications in the Region 1 community. The five other deaths include a 35-year-old woman and a man and woman in their mid-40s. All of the latest deaths have been listed by the Ministry of Health as persons who were unvaccinated. Since the start of this month, Guyana has recorded 88 COVID-19 related deaths and almost 3,000 new cases. Region 4 remains the region with the highest number of COVID-19 related deaths and active cases. The Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, said more persons need to get vaccinated since the data continues to show that the highest number of deaths is among the unvaccinated persons. Uh our total amount of deaths right now is 887 persons dying. Uh, most of these persons, as you know, would be unvaccinated. A few of them would have been partially vaccinated, and there are very, very few uh, who would have been fully vaccinated. Those who have been fully vaccinated and die are those who would have had uh, a poor prognosis because of several comorbidities. Uh, but generally, the majority of persons who have died so far are those who have been unvaccinated and having other comorbidities. And finally, the head of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Cabriesus, stressed the need for health workers to be prioritized for COVID-19 vaccination.
It comes as the organization estimated that some 115,000 health workers may have died from COVID-19 between January 2020 and May this year. The pandemic is a powerful demonstration of just how much we rely on health workers and how vulnerable we all are when the people who protect our health are themselves unprotected. A new WHO working paper estimates that 115,000 health workers may have died from COVID-19 between January 2020 and May this year. That's why it's essential that health workers are prioritized for vaccination. Data from 119 countries suggest that on average, two in five health and care workers globally are fully vaccinated. But of course, that average masks huge differences across regions and economic groupings. In Africa, less than one in 10 health workers have been fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, in most high-income countries, more than 80% of health workers are fully vaccinated. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.